Global warming. There are few other combinations of words that spark such fiery controversy in our society. One half of the argument is insistent that climate change is nothing more than a natural and inconsequential process of our planet's evolution. They claim that humans have nothing to do with it. After all, the world was not the same during the days of the dinosaurs as it is today, and it's certainly true that the environment has been changing since the planet first squeezed into existence out of space dust. But to say that humans have had nothing to do with record high temperatures and an exponential spike in the number of natural disasters over the past few years might be a bit short-sighted. The other side of the argument knows it's happening. They look at what's going on in the world and insist that the sudden ferocity of climate change is and can only be a direct consequence of humanity's unchecked exploitation of Earth. According to NASA, there's a 95% chance that at least the sudden intensity of global warming is a man-made problem. We burn fossil fuels, pollute the air with factory processing, and pile garbage on top of garbage. Add that to an ever-growing and unsustainable factory farming demand and exponential population growth moving into once forested areas, and you've got a recipe for less air, life-shortening pollution, and diminishing ozone. In fact, there's actually a hole in our atmosphere above Antarctica at this very moment. Considering that ozone is a big part of what keeps the sun from melting you, that's not exactly a good thing. Unfortunately, it also keeps the ice of our planet from melting as well. It's been estimated that as much as 70% of the Earth's water is locked away in the polar ice caps. What would our world look like if all that ice suddenly melted? Would there be any land left? Or would we all be living in a real life version of the movie Waterworld? Stay tuned to the rest of this video to find out. But before we begin, if you're enjoying the video, then feel free to leave a like and warm up your world by pressing that subscribe button. You can ring the notification bell for a chance to be the first one to view new content from my channel. Now let's get started. According to scientists, 70% of the water on Earth is currently frozen in places like Antarctica, Greenland, and the Arctic. But at least some of that ice is still in the water, right? The Titanic didn't exactly run into a clump of seaweed. And your iced coffee is full of little ice cubes. But when they melt, it doesn't suddenly spill out of your cup. It just gets a little watery. Maybe the level raises a teeny tiny bit but nothing to write home about. That's because of a little thing called water displacement. But the thing about Earth is that not all of that ice is in the water. And when outside ice plummets into the ocean with a thunderous crack, it causes sea levels to rise. Over the past 20 years, scientific measurement has estimated an increase in depth of somewhere between four and eight inches. That's barely a few millimeters a year, and it really depends on where and how the measurements are taken. Dismissers of climate change use this ambiguity as proof that all evidence is suspect. But it's hard to ignore the sinking of an entire island. New Moore Island, or South Taupati, depending on where you stood on the debate over its ownership, was a little uninhabited sandbar off the Bay of Bengal. I say was because this hotly disputed piece of real estate is now permanently underwater. Considering the fact that it was uninhabited for the simple reason that it flooded every year, that's not entirely surprising. It just never reappeared. In retrospect, that makes the feud between Bangladesh and India over who it belonged to a little pointless but it's also some pretty convincing evidence that the sea levels are indeed rising. But just how high can they get? To put it in plain terms, if every little cube of ice on Earth melted, the sea level would rise a staggering 68.3 meters. That's 224 feet. Now granted, at the rate things are going, that amount of melting would probably take somewhere in the range of 5,000 years to finish but it would cause dramatic and disastrous changes to the planet's landscapes. Islands would be hit the hardest. Some places would be left with only their mountains sticking out of the ocean like fat, stony fingers. Many would go the way of New Moor and be no more. Bad joke, I know, but it makes sense that places surrounded by ocean would disappear first when the water rises. In fact, scientists estimate that if things continue the way they are, by the year 2050, there could be more than 100 million people displaced by climate change. By 2100, that number could skyrocket to a mind-blowing 2 billion individuals worldwide with nowhere to go, a good many of them from islands that no longer exist. Places like the Marshall Islands, Kiribati, the Maldives, and Tuvalu will end up completely submerged. Whole civilizations gone. 
just like that. The population of Marshall Island alone is over 50,000, and Kiribati's headcount is pushing 110,000. Trying to find room for so many global warming refugee when the continents themselves will have shrunk would likely push our planet into a worldwide crisis. In North America, much of the West Coast, including most of Los Angeles and San Diego, would vanish underwater. Further up, we'd lose all of Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland. San Francisco would end up an island and the bay would swell so large it would swallow Sacramento whole. As if that's not bad enough, on the east coast, the Atlantic would rise far enough to cover places like Houston, New Orleans, and the entire states of Florida and Delaware. There are over 20 million people in Florida, 2.3 million in Houston, just over 900,000 in Delaware, and more than 300,000 stuffed into New Orleans. That's over 23 million fighting to find a place to stay. In the northeastern U.S., we'd lose the entirety of New York and Boston with a combined displacement of a little more than 9 million people. In the end, the mainland of USA ends up with something like 32 million homeless and a Statue of Liberty with only her arm and head above water. South America fares better, but still not that great. Two new inland seas would bury the cities of Buenos Aires, Montevideo, and Rio de Janeiro. Considering there are nearly 3 million people in Buenos Aires, just about 6.5 million in Rio, and over a million citizens in Montevideo, there's somewhere along the lines of 11 million refugees. Unlike the US, South America has extensive rainforest to fall back into, but human expansion into those previously protected areas will only destroy the environment further and speed up global warming. Africa arguably takes the least damage land-wise, but still loses living space for a sizable population. Egypt is positively decimated with Alexandria and Cairo lost to the water. The Persian Gulf would expand, burying entire countries like Qatar and Bahrain and destroying the city of Baghdad. That's nearly 22 million people battling the desert and makeshift refugee camps. But aside from the world's islands, Eurasia would take the hardest hit. The British Isles would become more like the British archipelago, and London would be completely underwater. The Netherlands would flat out cease to exist along with much of northern Germany, including the city of Berlin. Italy's shops already flood when the tide comes in. That skinny, boot-shaped peninsula probably sank underwater long before anywhere else ever had the pleasure. To put the amount of loss, the sheer scale of people displaced into perspective, we can look at the numbers. London has a current population of about 8.1 million. Italy stands at 60.59 million strong. That's a lot of bodies to find space for in an already extensively developed part of the world. Tack on the Netherlands 17 million and Berlin's 3.5 million, and that's just about 81 million left without the basic necessities. With high population densities and more coastal cities than you can shake a stick at, if all of the ice in the world melted, Asia would be in for total catastrophe. Tokyo, Singapore, Bangkok, Beijing, and ironically Bangladesh, along with most of coastal India, would end up completely flooded. There are just about 9 million people in Tokyo and nearly 22 million in Beijing. Beijing. But Bangladesh? Bangladesh is home to just under 165 million people. When New Moor Island flooded forever, it was nothing. Just a bit of sand out in the sea that flooded for the very last time. But if sea levels rise and the edge of Asia goes under, over 212 million people will lose their homes. Imagine nearly 300 million people whose homes aren't just destroyed, they're completely gone. With most natural disasters like an earthquake or a hurricane, the house might fall but at least the land is still there. People can rebuild, but if all the ice on Earth melted and sea levels rose, there's no rebuilding. Not in the same place, anyway. The land itself would be gone forever. So what would we do with all the people who have no place to go? After what would probably be several years or decades worth of debate, we'd pretty much be forced to take over areas that were previously protected. National parks, the rainforests, habitats of endangered species. Between deforestation and concentrated waste in refugee camps, the ecological impact on Earth would be disastrous. Just about the only silver lining to all that melting would be a new, mostly unexplored landmass. Antarctica. With no ice and the average global temperature being 80 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the old 58, Antarctica would be ripe for colonization. And chances are that after the flooding, nations would be locked in battles over the poles for who knows how long. In the interest of avoiding World War III, it might be easier to try and stop or at least slow down the warm-up before it's too late. That might sound like an impossible task, and it's certainly not something that's going to happen overnight. 
but the reverse of global warming has already been set in motion. Switches towards renewable energy sources and away from fossil fuels in several countries has begun the process of reducing humanity's impact on our beautiful blue planet. People are really starting to wake up to their impact on this world and putting forth deliberate effort to change their own trajectory. It's this conscious awareness that prompted 195 countries to sign the Paris Climate Accord in 2018 a lengthy promise to work towards planet-healthy, sustainable energy sources all across the globe. Humanity has a long road ahead of it when it comes to climate change, but the means and the motivation for an energy revolution are finally being realized. Maybe our world doesn't have to flood. Who knows, we might just save this thing after all. So what do you think? Did you gain a better understanding of what it might look like if all the ice on Earth melted? Do you live in one of the doomed cities? And what do you think would happen to all those refugees? And do you think global warming is a man-made issue or a natural product of our planet's evolution? If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.